Talk to me about that. People are going to really be intrigued about that. We were trying to convert the lines to be like rolling rainbows. You got to know how to do wild stuff. Your toy will fuck you up. Take your paint. Because I felt like when I went to a store, a hardware store that was local and I was trying to keep the racks cool. So I'd see like all like these, you know, brand new fucking yellow school bus yellows coming out. And I'm like, okay, we'll just take one or two off the rack. Next day I go back and there's none. And there was 12 cans of it. Wow. And I'm like, next day you see a throw up on the line going down in school bus yellow. You're like, this toy went back and took all 12 cans, made the store hot. And now he's doing throbs with the fuck my paint, basically. That's how I look yeah, at it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, that's my motherfucking school bus yellow toy. And they look at you like, what? What you going to do about it? And then you go back over there and beat the shit out of them. It's like, don't ever touch a can of paint in this neighborhood again. And don't ever go paint it. Killer, killer, podcast. Killer, killer, official .com. You need the television app. 24 7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London or central as you need to be, choose to be, want to be, desire to be, all right? You don't want to be anywhere else. We're going transatlantic right now. Believe that with a legend. Um, big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. Hold tight, everyone's got a television app. You know what to do. You know what it is. Street and art, sport, culture. For your sins um we got strange station as well hold tight new york you are not ready for this one you a legendary star wars fine artist airbrush artist talent beyond and one of the main uh, creditors for the graffiti explosion trust this duster you a inside the place what are we saying gentlemen duster Thank Duster. you. Duster. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. Hey, Killer. <laughs> How are you, my brother? We're Killer in the house. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> What's up, brother? You go, I'm good, brother. Hey, li we're literally in your house right now, aren't we? This is this is the main hub of, of Dust at UA right now. Yes, the, 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 the cave of it all, where it all started. One part of it started. The background, right? <laughs> Uh, yo, can we see that? If you're not watching and, and, listen, and listening, we've got art all over the place. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. <gasps> nice. See, this is already not going to be your basic podcast, people. This is going to be some legendary conversations right here. Subway trains. Subway trains. You know, just casual subway trains up on the wall. Legendary pieces. Unquestionable levels of historical documenting. In one man's crib. Album covers. Album covers. Oh, right. So let's just get into this one, D. So the sculptures. You see the new sculptures. But this this record you you've just done commission for. This is a new release, isn't it? That's just come out today, right? Um, actually, a couple of days ago, the album did. Um, for like a year and a half, we had to wait for that album cover to, you know, the whole album to be done. Because wow. it really vinyls is being slow making vinyls now these days. Mm. There's only a couple couple companies that are actually making them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was the what's the artist's name again? What's her name? Um, Lee Taylor. Lee Taylor. So yeah, we need to check Taylor. that out. Check out town. She's it's more jazz blues. Yeah. You know, oh, she's into that. So that's that kind of genre. Those kind of genres. Yeah, it's more jazzy blues. Mm. It's hip. It's good. Mm -hmm. What kind of music are you into, D? Out of curiosity. Everything. Otherwise, I get bored. You know, it's like one minute it could be punk, hardcore, grunge, mm. a little bit of everything, classical. Mm. Frank yeah, Sinatra okay. in there, you know? A little bit, not as much. I think with jazz, especially, uh, my my head and heart goes straight to, to New York. It just feels like the music for that city. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's that error. That's what you're into. You like jazz? I like I like jazz in its places. You know what I mean? Like I like I, I like hip hop in its places as well. I think the city, you know, it has that grit that that you know nine that that boom bap hip hop. That's that's New York, right? Oh, you yeah, like hip hop too? Yeah, I grew up in that too. So it's like part of it. Yeah, 
yeah. hip hop culture. And, and then Dez just passed away, and that was like really hard for me to take. Rest in peace. He was Dez. really there from the beginning. You know, it was like me and him kind of grew up together. And it's like, we kind of went our own separate ways. I went to California, lost contact with him. So it was like kind of came back. We painted a little, you know, we still mm-hmm. had a lot of plans to get things done together. But then the COVID thing took him out. So that uh, kind of hurt me. Of course it did. And it, that was it, unexpected. Uh, you know, uh, everyone, man. It's just, younger than me. Yeah. yeah and I just me. hooked up with Trap the other day. And it was just like me and him, I kind of felt it because it was us little family of us, me, him, Liz, and we saw always paint together. Oh, and now man. He's gone. Just like that. Yeah. yeah Nick yeah, 707 yeah. last year when they had the show at the Museum of Art at um the Bronx Museum of Art, the Henry Chalfont show. Yeah, of course. Smoked a joint with him right before like I left him and a week later he passed away from COVID. Oh like, man, that oh. is just crazy. Just like that. Family. <gasps> yeah, this COVID thing's fucking up a lot of people. Yeah, for real. Yeah. Do you do you do you feel like Duster? Because obviously you're from a, 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 an era, and obviously you've got a huge, you know, things going on now. But but do you feel like there? You do feel that the the mortality of uh, we. Uh, I certainly do. Watching my heroes, you know what I mean. It's like I'm proud that you guys are still doing what you're doing to that level. But you must whilst living it you must feel to yourself well like time time is the currency yeah but then there's also a slim margin where it's like you don't have enough time to put out a certain amount of work or something Mm. but it probably limits it because i kind of left it for years i was doing tattoos so it kind of limited down my work that you'll even find out there on linen or the sculptures now i'm doing those little little granite stones you know you, you the evolution I guess you're constantly trying to, well, trying, you're constantly doing, you're changing the format, you're changing the the approach, the the way in which graphs perceived and and what mediums are, uh, you're using to create it, aren't you? Yeah, it's like whatever tools are available. Like the guy next door is working with, with, with a, a diamond tip blade and I had to cut some bricks and I started cutting the bricks and I was like, hey, I could cut my name into this brick and then I started doing that and that's how that, that kind of evolved from. So I started doing that, you know, it was something interesting. I seen people doing like cutouts on foam, but that's not going to last long. I want mm-hmm. something that's going to last forever. And that's like Henry Chalfont also inspired that because he was a sculptress and worked with big, huge stone blocks. <gasps> so I was like, that's cool. I want to do that one day, you know. It's Henry like, Chalfont did that? He, he used to do? Yeah, he actually he was a sculptress first. That's... Yeah, like did, did photography, like kind of on the side. So what happened was when he was going out to get inspiration to do his sculpturing, he went out and took pictures, went down in the tunnels, took pictures, and trains were going by. And then when he got the film developed, that's when he started really noticing and recognizing the art on the train. Mm -hmm. And that's when he started showing these photos to other people. And they're like, we want to buy those photographs just for the artwork that was on the trains. So that's when he started getting involved in just taking pictures of the trains for the graffiti thing. That's when the whole doors opened up with him, with Jack Stewart, that photographer who took pictures before him. Mm -hmm. He was around. I guess Jack Stewart was also went to Europe and left. And he had shots from like 1967 to like 71. Wow. And I was like, it was like a real... It was a show that he was showing Henry Chalfant. I was lucky I was on the train that day, and Henry was like, hey, you want to see some photos from Jack Stewart? And I was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> went up to his studio, and he had a slideshow for us. It was about, like, two hours long, and it was just one shot of old trains, old graffiti, that I, writers I never even heard of. And I was like, fuck, this is, like, wow. another generation I never even heard of. You know, that I'd hear about from Comet, you know, mm. or Blade would tell me these stories. But this guy actually had photographs of him. I was like, rare. Wow. Yeah. Super so rare. Like, then that's when Henry Chalfant started realizing, like, he was now part of one of those eras. And really, yeah, he cataloged a lot of artwork. Yeah. A lot of people weren't at the time. Yeah. I mean, it goes without saying that Star Wars was a define a, a definable moment in, in in an era of graffiti, and it it brought it brought it brought the art form out to to the to the public in such a um, 
it, it, it was it was a magnum opus of a of an event. What was the first time you saw it? Bro, I, I, saw, <laughs> I mean, I was I was young, but like I was late, obviously, because I'm I'm younger. But I must have seen it when I was about 19, 18, 19. Really? And just really? I think what it was was it, it wasn't just the graffiti thing, because you know, I, I was into hip hop. I I I knew there was a correlation there, obviously, with graffiti and, and hip hop. But when you have it in a documentary like that, it's like a ready built package. Here, have this world. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like phase two, I'd bump into him. Like he'd be spinning records with Grandmaster Flash. Some somewhere in the ghetto, we'd be down in the South Bronx, and everybody's like, "Hey, phase two's up the block. He wants to meet you. He's jamming right now, with Flash." And I'm like, "Oh, cool, you know." So like, let's go to this little party in the middle of the projects. That's you know? crazy. That's crazy. So did did anything ever phase you back then? It was a pretty hardcore thing to be doing. And go, going to them places, that must have been pretty hardcore. Oh, like the yards and tunnels. You had to worry about like the ball busters coming in. Everything, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. But I never had really problems, you know. So it's like I was already growing up on the street. So it's like, you know, maybe my skin color and shit. But then they realized, like, I'm not a Caucasian. I'm a white boy. So yeah. it's just like <laughs> I'm yeah. not from Scarsdale. I'm from the boogie down, bitch. Yeah. So look, bro, if you want to, you know, you ain't get my paint. So, Hell yeah, that's that shit. That's a talk. You know, I was raising a common blade, so I know what it was all about. You know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And I talked to Cat Trap the other day, and he's telling me like, yeah, well, Scene and Sync caught me slipping on Mashula Parkway, and they took my paint. And I was like, what? <laughs> and I was like, I know Trap. He's got a heart. And if I sat there and said, hey, Trap, jump that motherfucker, he would, you know? So I was like, yeah. why didn't you just sock him? And he goes, oh, I didn't know at the time, you know? Like, you didn't know it. Well, now you know. He goes, no, Scene's cool. He, he made it back for me. You know, he gave me a bunch of paint, and he was really sorry about it. I was like, oh, okay, you know, and Sin, rest in peace. He wasn't, you know, mm. being around, but I would have been like, dude, trap, you know, yeah, little yeah. trap. He's in our car, you know. <laughs> so tell me, tell us the 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 feeling, the at the landscape of the time. What was I really want to get into the the the, the, the mechanics of like what life was like. In that era of New York, what, what I, I want no that cell phones, that, no internet, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I was telling somebody the other day how, how today with cell phones and internet and everything else, I could plan a meeting five months ahead and still get in touch with everybody, and still nobody could show up. It's like <laughs> years ago, it's like we'd have to leave messages on a tree, and still we'd set it up where we'd all meet at a certain yard at a certain time and be there. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I That's guess totally underestimated. Now you got a second chance. Back then, you did, and so you had to make sure you were there. Yeah, they couldn't call you up on the cell phone and say, I "Can't make it." It's like, no, you got to be there. Otherwise, he's going to call you a bitch for the rest of your life. <laughs> You know, it's, that's probably why, you know, like things change, you know, it's like everybody's become a narcissist and it's like, no, I'm entitled to do whatever I want, whenever I want. And yeah. No, we're not showing up today and I'm not going to tell you. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's could, full on. Right. It's, it's like a level of, it's a level of um, dedication that, that people can just like swerve and like, you know, it's, it's reliability is out the window with phones sometimes, isn't it? You know? It is, right? It's not just me, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not being a up. grumpy old man about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's for real, it's true. It's true. I feel very privileged to have okay. lived in an area where there wasn't. But phones. people are like, you're hard, you know? And I was raised by like old captains of ships and stuff. And they were like, you know why we're hard on our mates and deckhands? Because when the ship goes down, the captain goes down with it. So that's why we're so hard, you know, on my mates and whatever, you know. It's like, hey, this is what I want and this is what we expect, you know. Yeah. Because well, the yeah. ship does go down, guess who's going down with it? The captain, you know. Yeah, it's like yeah. the he- deck hands don't get blamed for it. It's yeah. the captain. So it's like, to me, I feel like it's my job to make sure everything goes right like this. Just mm. me getting the Zoom going. And everything. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to make sure it gets done right. Yeah, and and yeah, you with both hands my grabbed ball. that. Yeah, my ship, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. literally. You know, so it's like, and that's how I take it. Now this generation is like, what? Uh, and whiners, and it's like, ah, back then we used to like, 
no, we're not taking this shit. You got to get the job done. Otherwise, you're fired. Did There was a militancy in graffiti uh, and still is. But there was one, like you say, that was built on just reliability and show up. And of its time... You're Did bringing you bring the yellows? I'm bringing the blues. I'm bringing the blacks. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And some yeah, yeah. people used to flake, and then I had to go to the yard with like three cans of paint, and I'd still pull it off. You know, three cans of paint. Matter of fact, that's this piece right here on, on linen. Oh, we're just going to see this. If you're not watching and you're listening, we're going to go to a picture here. Oh, nice! Wow. So it's this. It's, it's a train piece. Yeah, I was taking it from a photograph in the winter time. Can you see it? Yeah. Wow. Sick. So I was good. wondering, three cans of paint. I had avocado green, a black, and a white. And you pull that off. That's crazy. See that one? Yeah. So we look, we're just going around the, the, the room a little bit more. Dustolian piece. That looks great. That looks like a professional uh, printed piece. Big up Don. You the West the side. He's like, Big up there's Don a collaboration we're putting together. You are into your fine art. It's not... You know, you're, you're very, very well versed in. Well, that was because of Dolores Newman. She was very, you know, because she's the one that found G. Michelle Basquiat and, and Keith Haring and Trey Nemeth. It's supposed to be all on linen, no more cottons. Get Dolores those was a creator, wasn't she? She was a curator of, of arts in New York. Uh, she was and the world. Uh, a chairwoman on the Metropolitan Museum of Art. That's it. So that's how she, yeah, she basically trained me the way they were supposed to be. That's and that's crazy. the problem in the, in the world of graffiti where I was trying to tell scene like, no, get them off a of cotton. You got to stay on linen and know what your price is per square inch. And we grow from that. We should have been at a hundred to $200,000 of painting by now, but because there's so many schmucks jump on the bandwagon and started giving it away. I got to compete with the cotton paintings mm. that ain't selling in a museum or it's not that quality. You can't, mm. they walk into a gallery and they go, Hey, would you like to buy this painting? It's by so-and-so. And right away to look at the back of it and see it's on cotton. And they'll be like, no, I'll have our people get in touch with your people. I'll have a nice day. Mm. And that's just being polite about it. But in the back of their head, they're saying that was a piece of garbage on garbage because it's not worth anything. It's on cotton. If it was linen, then they would take you serious. But since so many graffiti artists painted on anything and had total disrespect for the fine arts, which is museum quality material that's going to last thousands of years, that's what they mm. want. Mm. Not something that 75 years from now you're going to see in the trash with a hole in it because it was all brittle. All you got to do is touch it, they'll break apart. Wow. So the value is going down right away instead of up. And a lot of people don't understand that. So that's what really set us back. And that's the only disappointment I have about the movement is it went unchecked. And mm. God forbid I say anything, people are like, oh, you're just a whiner. How about I knock you out? Because whatever you do for a living, if you have a bunch of cutthroats coming in and doing it with cheaper material to mm. take food out of your mouth and off your table to feed your family, what the fuck would you say? Yeah, you understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pardon you. my language. No, no, no. It's Some people cost. get the point when I say a curse word, they get it then. They go, yeah, maybe I would be upset. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it goes without saying. When you've done the graft and worked so hard in building up your name, taking risks, huge risks, and yeah. the and, and consistent output over decades, I would understand that that would do your head in. <laughs> <laughs> And trying to keep it where it's like, we know what we're worth per square inch. And then I have French people all the time. They want to haggle with me. Like I'm selling a used car. Mm. And I'm like, look, don't even come at me like that. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, I'll yeah. just tell them the price just went up. And they go, what is your problem? Do, do, do. You know, then get the fuck out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they don't get it. And guess what? Years from now, when you go, damn, I should have bought that duster when I should have. You know, it's yeah, like, yeah. I don't need your money. What you're going to need is my painting more than you're going to, I need your money. It's like when you ain't got it and there's millions of bank skis out there, go ahead, go on eBay. You can pick anyone you want. Yeah. It's like they're worthless. Stencil too. It's like, dude, come on. Yeah. Dude, he's chasing my tail right now. It's like, I heard about this. Yeah, so, yeah, bank ski this. tags and shit. I'm like, what's up with this? And I was like, I didn't even know who the dude was. So, so you, you've been uh, frequenting with, with, with Banksy recently? Is that what you're saying? I guess because Anna and them, 
you know, she was like, go down there. They got that expo, tag it up. And I bombed on it. And one of it, she came down there with me and I bombed on it again with her and they buffed her and they left mine. Oh shit. You know? <laughs> so I was like, well, obviously they don't like you. And she's like all pissed off at Banksy because of that. She's like, oh, that's fucked up. And all this time she was on his dick and I was like, look, fuck that dude. And I was like telling about the Robo thing, you know, how I met Robo and yeah. Robo had his thing. But honestly, Robo told me like at the end of this show I had and I talked to him, I was like, what's up with you and Banksy anyway? And he's like, no, he's cool. Me and him are all right, you know? Mm. And I was like, oh, all right, so cool. So he's like, yeah, it's just like we're just showboating going over each other and shit like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, showboating is a great, <laughs> a great term for that. Yeah, because each one is it's like an alley oop. Drama, I guess you know. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, like They're giving each other now. the alley oop at the time, weren't they? Yeah. So he kind of played. Which me and Cap, it was a little bit more serious. Where it's like, no, we wanted to kill each other. <laughs> Talk to me about that. People are going to really be intrigued about that because obviously it was it was a seminal moment in Star Wars. But they, this really played out, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it came at us with a shotgun a couple of times and shit. So it's like we all got away, but it was me saying a couple of times hanging out. But what it was, it was an issue. Is like he was just a toy, and we just go over him. We didn't care about him. And I think back in the days, he did a burglary, broke into a paint store in our neighborhood. And I was like, seen, found out about it. It says, come on, let's go. So we were going to the store, we try to get some more of our homeboys down there. So as they're getting the paint out of the store, we were just going to take it. I said, let's just take all their paint as they get it piled on the sidewalk, ready to split. So they had bags full and they brought it out to the sidewalk and they didn't see me and seen on the side, like around the corner. As soon as we seen them bagging up the paint and bringing it outside the store, we came by and swooped two bags. And when we like, all right, we got our cut. And I remember him looking at me like, you fucking... <laughs> Bastard. You know? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's right. It's called taxation. So we took ours, walked away and shit. But years from that, he was always pissed off at me and shit. So he always had shit for me. And then he kind of evolved into a better throw up artist, which to me was just a throw up artist. You might as well bring that shit over to the, like the alphabet lines and shit. Keep that shit off the of six. I don't know. For some reason, him and scene kept clicking together. You know, mm. but then like at night when you want to go to the yards or somewhere on the five line, you went with Cap and PJ. And for some reason, he was going around going over Dondi pieces and everything else. And you played it off like you didn't care. Or you didn't know what was going on. Mm. But then in the daytime, me and you doing a piece on a wall, Cap was just like, oh, you want to play both sides, you know, so I'll mm. go over you too, you know. So mm. for a while he had beef with with Steen, you know. Mm. I remember Steen talking about it in, the, in the new extension of Style Wars that he actually did go over us before they get the video. But the next day we were supposed to finish that wall. We didn't really get shots of it. And we didn't finish it. So it was wow. all bullshit, you know. It's like when I seen it, like I was like, damn, he can't even tell the truth about what really happened. Mm. You know, it's like all that night we kept missing each other. I was going over to Caps. Caps were going over me. It's just like we kept missing each other by like five minutes. You know, I was like wow. touching the paint. It was wet. I was like, man, he was here. Fuck, that is just that, that, the intensity in that is crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. But, 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 and Cap, yeah, it's all over stupid shit too. But Cap, Cap um, is a breed of art uh, of writer that I also feel like a lot particularly London artists can relate with. There's a relatability to him as an individual that represents an aspect of graffiti. And it's, it's, it's played. It's, yeah. It's played its part. Vandalism. Yeah. Yeah. The vandals, it's like too feel like they can go in and just go over anybody's artwork and be cool about it. Back in the days you go in my yard and you go over one of our burners, you probably won't make it out of the yard. Yeah. That's how serious we took our artwork. We started like, no, you're a throw up artist. Take that shit to Queens or something on an alphabet line where there's a hundred of them and they're rivets and shit. Mm -hmm. And there you can see a throw up. But we were trying to convert the lines to be like rolling rainbows. You got to know how to do wild style. If you're a toy, we'll fuck you up, take your paint. Because I felt like when I went to a store, 
a hardware store that was local and I was trying to keep the racks cool. So I'd see like all like these, you know, brand new fucking yellow, school bus yellows coming out. And I'm like, okay, we'll just take one or two off the rack. Next day I go back and there's none. And there was 12 cans of it. Wow. And I'm like, next day you see a throw up on the line going down in school bus yellow. You're like, this toy went back and took all 12 cans, made the store hot. And now he's doing throbs with the fuck my paint, basically. That's how I look yeah, at yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, that's my motherfucking school bus yellow toy. And they look at you like, what? What you going to do about it? And then you go back over there and beat the shit out of him. It's like, don't ever touch a can of paint in this neighborhood again. And don't ever go paint it. And Trauma then played out in real it time. It, up. it was like, I felt like it's I was crazy. In prison. That's why when I went to prison, it was like the same thing. I was rolling up shot callers. Oh, you ain't a shot caller. This is my yard now. Now get your shit. Get the fuck out of here. Wow. They're like, what? I'm like, dude, you went out sideways. You want to run paperwork on me? You didn't even ask permission. I'm like, I'll show you a neighborhood I come from. Ask me first. You think I'm a child molester or a rat? Ask me first. Dan, if you don't believe me, go in my C file. Don't sit there and come after me, though. Yeah, we'll check your C-file, brother. You're cool. I was like, what? Wait, back the fuck up. You went into my C-file to find out something that you could have asked me? Check it out. Roll up your shit now. And they'll be like, what? Mm. <laughs> and I'm like, totally changing this shit around now. Wow. And they'll be like, yo, we got some shot calls want to talk to you. Bring them on. Bring them on. It's like, I left Folsom. They know me now. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I change your plans. <laughs> it's a, so, it was a real time, man, and there was so so much competition. There was so much competition out there. I mean, you know, there's um, you know the, the classic dump coach um, mayor God. piece. Of, you know what I mean? Like, but this, you know, these intense drama, dramatic moments that were you know, internalized in a scene, they played out for everyone to see. And the intensity that Graf hit New York must have been crazy. Yeah. Well, back then it was like something to do. It was really un undercover. It wasn't explo exploited until like Martha Cooper and Henry Chalfant was like making books about it mm. with Star Wars. Yeah. We never even seen it in New Jersey. It was like, it just basically stayed on the subways because we were bored. We had nothing to do. Yeah. They rolled through our neighborhoods. And it was like, let's bomb on them. We didn't really bomb on walls because anybody can go up to a wall and do a throw up over or tag up over it. The train yards were like more of like the elite. Once you yeah. got to the yard, then you were like the master of now of your domain, you know, mm -hmm. basically. It's like now you're on the internet. You got a computer. You, you know what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Now you're no longer practicing doodling on paper. So it's like, and that's how I felt walls were in the neighborhood. Mm. And plus, like, I don't know. I had, I was telling somebody this story. I tagged on a store once. And next thing you know, the store owner pulled up on me and with a Cadillac and said, get the fuck in the car. And took me around and said, look, I ever see that tag on my walls again? Somebody else will be here to talk to you. And I was like, wow. understand, get the fuck out of the car. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's kind of like that too. Like the subways, you don't have like the president of MTA coming in a limo, picking me up and saying, look, stay off the fucking trains. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Maybe we did do that back in the days. We all probably would have stayed off the fucking trains, but yeah, they didn't. Yeah. It was like a free for all. Like stay here. You play, play with the trains all you want. Cause they were rusted buckets of shit anyway. Yeah, and they were fucked they up. Were. Yeah. Like if I like I go to Europe and I see a brand new clean train, and people want to paint it, and they look at me like, "Don't you want to paint it?" I'm like, "No." It's like when I painted trains, it was like it was fucked up. The trains, yeah, the tr the trains were so, fucked anyway. Yeah, yeah. So now it's like it's clean, and I understand like what they talk about the broken windows law. Now they're talking mm. about broken windows. You know what that is, right? Yeah, yeah. If the, if the window's broken, then that means that there's crime coming. You know, it's, 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 for those that don't know, the broken window effect is essentially uh, if you let one thing slide, then the other things will uh, de develop. All, yeah, all anarchy will break out, just the yeah. little things. Yeah. And I understood that because years, I was explaining to somebody just the other night, I was like, what that basically means is, psychologically you get in a train and you see it smashed with tags all over back in the days i get in a train three o'clock in the morning i'm downtown going back home i'm going through the south bronx 
And I'm just thinking like, you know, kids could get in this train and they see me, white dude, they're thinking like, oh, money. And just the graffiti and looking around and saying, there is no law and order here. Mm. Maybe I can just go and reach into his pockets and start taking his money. It's that psychological mental effect that it has on weaker mentalities mm. that would draw them into doing more crime. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? It's like a yeah. subconscious thing saying there is no law and order here. Mm. I understood it. I lived it. I've actually felt it like, damn, this would be a perfect place for a crime. And guess what? Me and my friends helped it out. Mm. So I understand it's like when it's clean, it's pristine and you get in, it's like, uh, you don't want to do a robbery here. It looks like there's a cop here all the time. You know, mm. understand what I'm saying? And there it looked like there was no cops here at three o'clock in the morning. It's obvious. Look, you know, and we didn't do it three o'clock in the morning while the train was in motion. It was mostly done in the train yards. And how I stayed that, away from it, inside. Can I can I ask you that that's such an interesting angle to, an approach you you being very aware that the act that you're doing can almost aid almost almost like a gateway to other Robbers. criminal activity. Yeah. Chains getting snatched. There was a lot of that. So many times in front of me, you know, I'm smoking a joint. I know the guy's an undercover cop because I sold him bud last night. He'll look at me, but then I'll stare at what he's staring at. Boom. Next thing you know, doors open. He sees two kids grab a gold chain off of somebody's neck and run out the train. He's following them. I'm mm. like, damn. He kind of used me here. I'm smoking a joint. They think like an undercover cop is in this train. They're going to bust him first. Mm. Nope, they didn't. Fuck. They grabbed the chain. He ran right out after him. And then he looked at me as the train's pulling away, like, good job. <laughs> I'll see you later. I was like, man, I didn't do nothing. I was just smoking a joint here. Wow. But that's how it was back then. Wow. I had no undercover thanks. cops buying bud from me. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> that's some tactics, some crazy tactics of its time. Um, yeah, well, they were on robbery unit. Back then, it was fucking crazy. The, yeah. um, the, um, the control. act of doing the act of doing piecing uh, on a train. There's there's falls and pros and cons and against and and um, I I feel like for, for a change of conscious thinking with graffiti, I mean it's a lot more easy easier to um, justify now with the emergence of street art. And furthermore, I think Joe Public they they kind of at peace that graffiti's been around long enough that you know they can handle a, a tag on a, on a pu public door. But, but there, but there is this thing about train graffiti, which I feel like, yo, like it's the exact thing that should be on because that's how we were brought up to understand graffiti is on train, yeah, New, New York. Train. Do you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. They should have gave us what we originally in style was. Remember when the president of MTA was talking about giving us 10 cars? Yeah. I was there at that meet, one of those meetings. We had a couple of them, and I sat at the head of the table like I was the president of MTA. It was funny. Mm. Uh, Henry got film with that. But I explained to him, like, yeah, let's get 10 cars and let the public decide. But the whole thing is that who's going to judge who's an artist and who's not? You know, it's mm. like I didn't think G. Michelle Basquiat deserved to be a graffiti artist or was even one mm. or or Keith Herring. Mm. So it's like, who's going to say who's what? You know, it's like, I knew yeah. that was going to be an argument there. It's like people are just going to jump on the bandwagon from East Bubble Fuck somewhere and have nothing to do with the movement because they want to get into the contemporary art world and start selling paintings in galleries. Yeah. Where we didn't. I didn't even have a dream of having a gallery show. Mm. It wasn't about that. It was just painting trains. Like scheme, you know, like everybody mm. else was excluded. If they can't read it, fuck them. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's how my attitude was. It was more like, I'm here because I wanted to escape the street life and get into a train and get in that yard so I can escape my reality of going home and dealing with that bullshit and mm -hmm. drama. It was just like, it was like almost a drug going in and having a punching bag to work out on because you had no other place to go with your frustration. Really? And there's a lot of like kids that. like that today. They got nowhere to go to even express themselves. They're yeah. just stuck. Yeah.
And it's mm. fuck. Everything's like, uh, it's, especially in London, there's cameras fucking everywhere. Yeah, London. I mean, there is cameras everywhere. <laughs> there is cameras everywhere, and I and and I just I just feel like uh, the graffiti does suffer in quality when it's the lab rat effect, isn't it? You're being watched, and I don't think it's healthy for anybody. Not just graffiti writers, just generally, it's like it's not a cool thing, and. I think that the, the the turnaround time of of a great piece, you know, it's the, the quality is determined on that. Yeah, yeah, we got to spend a couple of hours in that train yard. We're not just going in and doing throws and moving. It's like no, we're sitting on a whole car tonight. We used to do that in the three yard, and we just like sweat out. A lot of times, I lost trains in the middle of like a whole car. I'm all I got to do is put the outline, and then the cops come in, and we're gone. We're like we're getting raided. I'm out of there. Wow. How many times did you get raided in your life, I should say, so far? How many times have you been raided? I try to count. It was around 12 or 13 times. Really? Yeah, that I lost, like, you know, cop would walk in, boom, we had to run. How many times have you been put inside? A couple of them were really close with, like, it was the undercover ones, the Vandal Squad, where yeah. they were, like, put on a chase. Really? You know, regular uniform cops, they, like, Really want, don't want to get on the tracks. Don't want to go under the train and chase you. I had vandal squads under the trains, on top of the trains, jump over fences, right up my fucking ass. Really? Yeah, well, it was like, damn. I had to run, jump, fly over fences, run into a junkyard, run to the end of the junkyard. And luckily we had these, it was one fence that we jacked with, with an actual jack. I bend the bars where I was skinny enough where I could slide right through the bars. Wow. And nobody, you know, and I knew wow. they get to, and they couldn't climb up because it wasn't a cyclone fence. It was just straight up bars like a jail. Crazy. So nothing to climb. So I knew I could just run. And you had to count like which one from the gate door because otherwise you're going to bump your head into something. Oh my so God. Yeah, I had to run and swoop through and I could feel his arm just whew, right through the gate. And like, Almost grabbed me. I'm Duffy. like looking back going, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, fit because he's a little fatter than me. That's crazy. How many times have you been? Um, how many times have you been bagged? How many times have you gone to jail? Oh, for other shit, not the graffiti. Uh, other stuff. A bunch stuff. of other shit. That's the know? broken window effect. The broken window effect. It's like, yeah. fuck it. If we got away with this. Let's keep getting away with everything. Yeah, yeah. And and with graffiti does come the racking, the raising of. Um, alcohol, racking food. Paint. Yeah, after a while, yeah, you start growing up and realize, hey, I'm racking all this paint. Why not sneakers? Why not clothes? Why not this? Why not jewelry? Why not the whole store? Yeah, Why yeah, not choice, right? The roof and go in, do whatever we want later on tonight, really. Yeah. How's that, how does that play in your conscience as, as, as a, you know, a gentleman, um, the age you are now, how do, do, do you rattle a little bit with that kind of conscience? Or are you yeah, totally it wasn't busy? like really mama poppers where they really worried about it, you know? Mm-hmm. There was nobody who was really seriously victimized that it's like they got raped or anything. Yeah, yeah, that's good. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't like that. Yeah, yeah, it was, it's the Robin Conscious Hood effect, wasn't it? On that one, no. Yeah, yeah. It's the Robin Hood effect, that. isn't it? Like, yeah, it's kind of a Robin Hood effect, you know? Mm. Take from the rich, give to the poor a little. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Give, give your art, worked. give your art to yep. the public, to the to the public. You know what? I think that's a, that's part of the problem. I think with graffiti, uh, graffiti on trains, and I, not that I have a problem with it whatsoever. But um, I, I don't, I don't condone it neither. This is a, a show that we do not condone the actions that uh, that go on. This is for <laughs> documentation purposes only. <laughs> that whole piece. But um, uh, seriously though, uh, you're right, and. I think there's a security breach that I think the public, Joe Public, see a graf- train on a graffiti, a graffiti on a train, and their, their, their first feelings are, well, if a graffiti writer can do that, then what can a terrorist do, quote unquote? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, back in the days, they could have planted a bomb in every train, you know? Well, it right? goes to show and that not know, all of these. Exactly 10 o'clock or rush hour, yeah. boom, they don't start exploding downtown, you know, in the tunnels and fuck us all up that way. You right. Know? It's like it just shows that you no, know, if they're still able to get to a train, your security sucks. Because I remember, like, it was about ten years ago when I was in LA, flew out here for about I don't know for a wedding or something, and I was spending time with Scene and PJ came over and mm-hmm. we were talking about yeah, let's go paint the train, fuck it. And it was like 
kind of like a couple of years, three years after 9-11. And PJ was like, no, there's cameras everywhere. It's all secure. It's tightened up. You can't go into them yards no more. And I was like, bullshit. I was like, there's a way in. Watch. Mm. We'll go the way we did years ago when they did do the double fences. And we didn't have to put a hole in the fence. We just go in the way the trains go in. And just mm. go climb down the poles before we get to, the, you know, the yard tower. Mm-hmm. And he's like, no, no, there's cameras. And sure enough, I was swinging around the city and I realized, no, they're not watching. There's no cameras everywhere. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's bullshit. And yeah, kind of pulled the covers on that. Mm-hmm. You know? Same thing like Home Depot. Home Depot, all those cameras in the back of the stores, mm. they're in dummy domes. Right. They're dummy dumbs. They don't even work. Yeah, so they're just too preventative. Yeah. yeah. Took them to trial, found that out. They really? For that one. <laughs> yeah. We took them to trial. We're like, don't you have the cameras saying that he did it? They go, those in the back of the store, dummy dumbs. <laughs> and look oh down and look at God. me like, you bastard. You tell anybody. We're going to fuck you up. I'm, like, I'm telling everybody. Get out of here. <laughs> That's hilarious. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I beat the case on that one. You know, like, they were trying to bluff, call my bluff. We we're like, well, show me the footage. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, oh, we don't really have any. Why don't you have any? There's no cameras in those cameras. <laughs> That's what you think. It does make me wonder, like, especially for London, you're like, how many of these cameras are actually active? Because with yeah, so many right. cameras, it's like, how, how, how much time have people got on their hands to actually flick through and watch through this stuff on something that's really trivial, like throwing up a tag or something like that? You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. It's like, do you want to call the cops for this one tag who's by the time they all rush there, he's yeah. gone. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's yeah, too but funny. I know in London they can follow you. So mm. many cameras. It's like, hey, they can follow you all the way home, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think again, just going back to the technological side of you know the, the 80s to, to now, it, the, the definitely is a we're policing ourselves. We got our cameras in our phones. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, we're telling on ourselves, basically. And for years I never had a camera or a cell phone. It was like even back in California. Bob Pfeiffer, he was the CEO of Disney. He was like, how the fuck are I getting in touch with you? <laughs> he had to get me my first cell phone. I was like, man, go to the tattoo shop or physically get in your car and go to my apartment and knock on the door. Otherwise, I was always at the tattoo shop right on Hollywood Boulevard. Just pull up. I'm always there. Yo, that's crazy. I love the fact that you... So how come you went to, 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 to California? How come you went to, to LA? Um, was it just to do tattooing? No, at first it was like this graffiti artist stash too. Right. He was like, hey, yeah. I got this place out there. They want to like open up a shop doing airbrushing t-shirts. Mm. And look, you want to go out there to have an apartment for us. The store, it's on Melrose. It's a really trendy, you know, neighborhood. And it's still mm. starting up. So I was like, all right, cool. So I went out there and kind of found out later on. It was like a fuck for that, all that cocaine that was kind of coming in. Mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Back in the day, remember it? Noriega North and all of them got busted and shit. Mm, 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 mm. The Clintons that were all involved and shit yeah, yeah, with all that shit. Ronald yeah, yeah. Reagan just say no. Meanwhile, they were the ones bringing it in. They're bringing the it in. Yeah, that's carpet. right. Yeah. I didn't know this. these guys were basically part of that. So it was like, we were just like a shell operation for them to explain why they got money coming in. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, so like I stayed a, almost out like a there front. and then I got bored and I kind of came out here it was funny. The second I came out here, it was like a month later, they all got raided for something stupid, like a package of Bud coming in from Hawaii. They signed for it. And that's when the FBI came in. They found the scales, the wow. other thing, the Coke and all this other shit. Other and you had just bailed. You That was lucky. Yeah. I was just like, Stash was like, let's go. He left. He went back to New York. He was like, I'm out of here. I'm not staying around here. I was like, like, fuck, you're just tripping. Don't worry about it. And like, big up stash as well, man. Big up stash. I'm working. I'm working all day. We're just keeping our money that we make. If they're not collecting my money to pay the rent and everything else, and they're just cooking the books, then they're doing it on their own. That's not me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fuck that, bro. Fuck yeah. that. Yeah, um, I'm paying myself. Wow. Fuck it. What's uh? What's the what's the East Coast saying at the moment in terms of of graph? What what how, what are your thoughts on graffiti at the moment? At, at the moment? Yeah. 
I think it's cool still that it's like all these years, it's like still people love to go bombing. It's now I like it. It's like move to freight train mm. and with style. I see burners on freight trains and I'm like, that's cool. Yeah. That's you know, cool it's as like, fuck. okay. It's like, I get the city trains. It's like, okay, I get it. But like a freight train, what a bear in the woods is going to like go rob somebody because he's seen this like, you know, <laughs> disturbing art. And it's not really disturbing. It's beautiful. You know, it's yeah. like, it's not tag. It's not really vandalism. As long as it, you know, I don't see throw ups really on it. So like they're trying to do some hardcore wild styles and I love it. Yeah, yes, I like that too. It well, feels I mean, right. There's a lot of good artists out there that are really good, you know, and yeah. I like where they took it to another level. You know, it's like yeah. doing like, you know, more realistic shit too with it. You know, yeah, I love that shit. I, I, I feel like freights, yeah, freights have like got a real vibe about them, haven't they? Like it, they, they suit graffiti as well, don't they? Yeah, because it's kind of like when I went to LA, I had no trains to paint. So my homeboys turned me on to the freight. Mm. We go to the freight yard. It was a cool little yard right off of downtown LA. Mm. It was cool. It had a little beach area and we bring the dog and it was cool. It was just laid back. Yeah, that's cool as fuck. And then cool. they go everywhere. It's like I yeah. never get pictures of them, but somebody like eventually take a picture of it. It's like rolling through Kansas and shit. And people are like, dude, we're at a fucking stop sign. Trains going through and boom, your name comes through. Oh, oh my god, god that cool. is so good. Oh gosh, girl, damn, what is he doing out here? Yeah, that's the best. Cool. That is the and best. And they go to Mexico and they go to Canada. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Canada. They go Denver, they cross everywhere. Do you still um do you still frequent with the guys that were in Star Wars? Like, do you do you do you guys still hang? I I have this romantic vision that you guys still, you know. All the original well, like cast. I said, Daz repainted a couple of, a, a year or two ago, back for part one out in New Jersey. Mm. We'll talk <clears> about one. Like the fake trains out here. Mm. The Tats crew, they invited us over there to paint the fake train. Big up Tats. Yeah, they got those fake trains, that, like, you know, big old slabs of steel. And mm. they got, like, the impressions of the doors and the windows. Mm. So it looks like it's a subway train from back mm. then. Mm. They got them in their little yards. They got, like, Tats crew and, and the other one, Tough City, where they sell spray paint. That's ass. it. Yep, yep, yep. So me and Des painted those. And we've been in touch because me and Des, like I said, go way back. Mm. A lot of people always wanted to paint with him. And he was just like, fuck that. He goes, yeah. I only paint with people I painted with from back then. Mm. So he kept it real. And I got in touch. Like I said, it was hard for me when, when, when he just passed away. Yeah, yeah. And now that. Trap, because I haven't seen Trap in years. That was the same thing. Because I went to California and then I seen him at the funeral at the Apollo when they had the little funeral for him. Mm. And I seen Trap and he was just like, he didn't even recognize. He was like, really, really, he just, he was all fucked up over it. I gave mm. him a hug and I got in touch with him on Instagram. I was like, it was me, asshole. He's like, dude, I was just like, I don't know. It was like you were crying. <laughs> so you couldn't see shit. He was like, I didn't even recognize this. Guy. That's hilarious. Oh, it's me, asshole. <laughs> So he went sailing, yeah, you know? and he's like, he loved. Let's keep in touch. Let's paint together. I was like, all right, cool. Yeah, because you're a keen sailor as well, aren't you? It's, it's very yeah. little little known fact. Well, although although uh, I'm sure you won't have a problem with exercising uh, a conversation on it. Sailing is your thing, isn't it? Yeah, sailing is my thing. I love, love that sailing. you love that. Talk to me about that. Is that because you grew up, like you said, you grew up with your your your, um, uh, your family were heavily into. Uh, into boats and sailing. And sailing, yeah. boating, yeah. I think naturally from Italy, my grandparents came from a little island called Punzi off mm -hmm. of Naples. Okay. So basically, they're all fishermen, so the water was natural for them. Mm. Yeah. That's awesome. That's and then awesome. my dad had a sailboat. Then I went to California. My uncle, he was the captain of a sailboat, so. Oh, this, so this, is, this is, you know, inherent. This is inherent in... In the dust of yeah, DNA. Yeah, it's pretty easy anyway. A lot of people ask me, they're like, damn, is it that hard? And I'm like, dude, it's so easy. I can show you how to sail in like five minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's so therapy, easy. isn't it? I guess it's therapy. Yeah, it's kind of because it's a workout. And then you get out on the water and just leave this land for a while. Have you got a boat now? Have you got a boat right now? Yeah, there's one out front. You know, we can go out there and see. You want to see it? Yeah, I want to <laughs> see it. Right, if you're not watching and you're listening... Get on the YouTube now. You're in for a rate treat. He's gonna get to the boat. He's going through the house. Start CC starboard bound. Yeah, it's parked out in the water out front. Lucky me, right? Yeah. 
Awesome. So we're currently walking through the. Uh, hopefully, the Wi-Fi will behave itself. Going upstairs, out of the cave. Yeah, out of the out of the so, cave. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, so you guys got got a visual on this too from the YouTube channel? For real, for real. Okay. Here we go. Out the door. Beautiful. Oh wow, it's a beautiful day today. So yeah. we're outside. We're currently outside on the uh, on the main deck. Sailboat. There's the sailboat. <gasps> Yo, the Wi-Fi is behaving itself just. Well, the Wi-Fi is actually right in that window upstairs. Oh, see. Yo, you've got so, a beautiful pa place, man. This is a lovely area. Whereabouts are we? We're in Pelham Bay. This looks That's beautiful. That's City Island out there. See the Long Island Sound is right behind that island. Ah. There's a glass that the tip is right there. That's Long Island. Oh, who's this? Someone's coming in. Someone's parking in. Yeah, that's my mom. Oh, fantastic. Wicked. We got the family <laughs> in. We <laughs> yeah, she's a gangster. <laughs> that's awesome. We're live right now. We're Taylor. live. Hey, live. Mama Duster. Mom. Yo. <laughs> hey, Mama Duster. There's another thing we're doing. Yo, and now we're seeing some more pieces, more framed pieces. Wow. Yeah, the guy who set up my website, he does these vinyl things. Oh, that looks fantastic. So yeah, yeah, like those. banners. It looks like it's been done on a yeah. banner. Yeah, vinyl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so people can turn around and paint those. That's so sick, because then you can roll it up and put it out wherever you want. I love that. Yeah. Some old stuff from years ago. Look, my dad got up. No, stop it. That's amazing. Dad, years and years ago, before I left to California. Fun for all the family, see? Yeah. Look at that. All stuff. these original tags all in the garage. Years and years ago. Wow, look at that. Behind this board. This, no, this, this career of yours has literally immersed your whole family, right? Yeah, what do you mean? Well, nurse. well, are they happy? Glad? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Do they? Do they? Do they love that? They do. They love that. The, what what their son does. Do they? Do they love that? My love that I do graffiti. What? You need help? I got another bag. I mean, I she needs help. Yeah, she's busy right now. Yeah, I guess they're happy about it. That it didn't turn into like where I'm locked up for something else. Mm, yeah, 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 <laughs> for sure. For growing or anything like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, totally. mom kind of like cool with the program because I guess, you know, she grew up in the South Bronx. So, but was she cool about the vandalism part? No. But like I said, it's like mainly I stayed on the trains and stayed out of everybody's way. Mm. But sometimes they see a train laid up by the house and they're like cool about it. Mm. As long as it wasn't like straight up tagging vandalism, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they didn't mind it, and they seen I like, incorporate a lot of art and then the tattooing and stuff like that. And then you traveled the world; you've seen everything, and you've got admirers from all corners. And that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. That that fuck. <sighs> yep, close the trunk, close the garage door. Thank you. Yeah, we're, we're in the middle of a iPodcast, Ma. And... Yeah, this is this <laughs> this is transmitting to the world, yo. This is going worldwide. <laughs> It's going worldwide. Hello. Worldwide. Hello, who am I speaking to? Hello, it's Killer Keller here, my dear. How are you? Are I'm... you an artist too? Yes, I am an You're artist an as artist well. Or an artist. <laughs> You're an artist, right? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an entertainer. <laughs> I'm sensitive. I'm an entertainer. <laughs> oh, okay. Yo. It's nice a pleasure to meet you. Meet you. Some more artwork. Loads of artwork. Again, if you are listening and not watching, get on the YouTube, check out these pieces. Like, and so much, just like some of these greats, I'm spellbound the fact that you're so inviting and letting us in to this world of yours. Thank you so much, D. See this? I don't know how the lighting wow. is in here. No, the lighting's good. We're, we're seeing everything good. at the moment. Yeah, it's looking great. Jeez. Wow. Wow, the, 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 see, these transcend graffiti. This is... This is all pencil sketches I used to do. Wow. Wow. Some pen sketch. That's incredible. 
I wonder how much they would be worth if you were to go and sell them, I reckon. I mean, these are rare. Very rare. Rare, rare. These pencil sketches look incredible. If you're, if, again, if you're listening and not watching, this, this is, a, this is a, a real moment. Wow. And, and, and also, I might just add as well that Duster, he was true to his word. He, he stuck at this Zoom thing because this is the first time you've done Zoom, right? Yeah. <laughs> first time. Exclusives yeah. right here all over the shop. His dad on the sailboat. Rest in peace. Lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic, man. Little trains. Oh, shit. He's got the little... He's got the yeah, collectible toy trains graft on. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. There's a bunch of them downstairs. All right. So let's head back down there. Yeah, man. All right. It's been I a pleasure, man. Later. Say goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye Stay bye. lucky. Don't talk to anyone other than. There you go. <laughs> Take care. Me. Lovely to meet you. Spinach. Mommy gets me spinach. Zeus. Mommy gets me spinach. Bye bye. Bye bye. The sailor man needs uh, spinach. Yo. <laughs> Thank you, Ma. <laughs> Fantastic, man. I love it. I love it. What a world. What a world. You know, and I think this. Uh, I think this says a lot to people. You know that. You you put your energy and passion into a thing. You can have a life that is controlled by how your your control of your own destiny, and you can do what you want to do and be successful at it. Just be true to it. Be, be true, true to, to it. it and it'll be true to you, right? That's the one, Duster man. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for having us in your house. Here. Another piece. You see that one? Oh, the, that's the legendary, legendary duster piece. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Look at that. That's Remember the old Kung Fu posters. Oh, anyway, yeah. That's that duster piece for me is just priceless. Ingrained in my head is that piece. For me. Yes. Wow. Yeah. And this one. That's a print of a painting. Amazing. See it. Wow. How's the lighting in here? Yeah, it's great. It's awesome. I mean, I'm just spellbound, man. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. Again, again, if you're not watching, so this is a, a blue graffiti piece with gray. It's like in the sky, is it? That, I mean, it's incredible. It looks like, a, it looks like a crazy transformer from what I'm seeing. Crazy. Look at that. Wow. How's it look on your screen? So dope. Yeah, I, I mean, when I edit this, it, it's going to be punching. Um, from where I'm seeing it right now, that it just looks incredible. Yeah. Wow. Love those. Yeah, that's what I mean about graffiti. It's like, I don't know, I guess because of Dolores Newman, you know, she's like explained to me how it works in the fine arts because she explained to me it's like something i never seen before. That's what the fine arts is. Mm. Take a material that nobody really works with, like brushes and whatever, mm. and does some with spray paint that's never been done before. Mm. And on train, and just taking lettering and doing something different that's never yeah. been done before. Under. Then you put yourself in the fine art. Yeah, she says, yeah, what do you yeah. want to do? Be an illustrator, do lettering, graphics. You could do it all. Or would you rather be in the fine arts where you have paintings in museums? Yeah, that's yeah for like, real. I'd rather be in museums, you know? Yeah, yeah, so let's get it. Okay, this is how we do it. And they explain to me and just slowly but surely. But then she was going through a lot of shit back then with her family and everything. And through all the people dying and everything and shutting down for a month till everything was taken care of. And I just said, you know what? And I was still young. She was like, mm. look, you're 22. They don't take you really serious. They'd rather wait till you're like in your 50s, see where you're at then. If you're not a doctor or a lawyer or whatever, because this is what happens a lot. Mm. And if you're still an artist, then they'll start taking you serious. Yo, it's the same with and music, man. Sell yourself out. You yeah. know, and I was like, okay, I'll go to California. I'll do tattoos for the next 20 years and we'll come back and see what's up. And I did. She passed away recently, but you know. Rest, rest in, in peace. peace. Yeah. Yeah. But 
it's still going on. You know, now it's just like I said, now we got more credibility with the whole Banksy thing and what he's supposed to be worth and, and why am I not worth that much too? Mm. So it's like trying to help me out a lot. Mm. Yeah. 100%. The future's bright, my friend. The future is Bro, bright. Sure. Yeah. Hey, that is super rare. It? Yo, Team Robo. Yo, that's so sick. That is so sick. Legendary. Peace. Rest in peace, Robo. Yeah, man. Rest in peace. Yeah. Dustin, thank you so much for joining us, my brother. Thank you so much for being a part of the podcast. Same here. Yo, over? Yeah, man. Bro, I've got... I think my 40 minutes is up, too. We'll be out, man. Listen, you stay lucky, D. Lots of love, man. Stay big up. shout out, Duster. All right. Tell Don I said hello. I yeah, and Don big up, Don. Yeah, man. Big up, Don, as well, for connecting this all up. Don Juan, man. UA. Don Juan. He's the man. He's the man. He's the man. Killer Killer Podcast. Out like him was out of fashion. All right. You stay lucky. Sharing is caring. You know what it is. Make sure you tell a friend to tell a friend. Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. Enough respect, Duster. Yeah. There you Peace. Go. Peace.